So it's not as much of a problem for this sort of intentional online delivery, but normally when this was a in-person delivered class, right about now, everyone's brains would be overheating. Going through all that segmentation information, all that interrupt information, to say nothing of the system call information, which is a new section that I've added in, pulled in from the rootkits class, uh, a typical in-person class that the students are like overloaded with bit fields and everything by this point. So I like to have this RDTSC intermission just to let people's brains cool off a little bit before we get into the next section, which is paging, which is another brain beater. So RDTSC, what is that? That is the read timestamp counter. And what's the time? It's time to read the timestamp counter, which I know doesn't even really work as a Beastie Boys reference, but I still tried it anyways. So the timestamp counter is a 64-bit counter introduced into Pentiums, so you probably don't need to use CPU ID in order to check whether the TSC bit is set so that it indicates this is supported, but, you know, I made you do that for CPU ID itself, so whatever. So the thing about the timestamp counter is that when the processor is reset, it resets to zero, and then it increments on every clock cycle thereafter. So each tick of the clock, the CPU, you know, clock that controls execution of the CPU will increment the value in the timestamp counter. Now you can also read this directly out of the timestamp counter MSR, which is number 10, so you know it's an old MSR. And there actually is a bit in control register 4, bit 2, which can be set so that it actually restricts the timestamp counter lookup to ring 0 only. So between the MSR reads and the restrictions on this, you could make it so user space straight up can't use this mechanism. But uh, as far as I know, no one actually sets that. Perhaps some virtualization software might, but I'm not aware of it. So different processors increment the timestamp counter differently, but that really doesn't matter unless you're trying to do extremely detailed performance monitoring, in which case you can go see that section. But it's also interesting that the, the virtualization extensions for Intel's instruction set have special provisions specifically to allow virtualization software to intercept the RDTSC and lie about how long it takes things to run. So here is the TSC bit in the CR4, which again can be set in order to make it so the timestamp counter is disabled and not accessible for ring 3 code. So what are some fun uses for RDTSC? Well, one is for timing code for performance reasons, but I consider that a bit of a yawn. The other interesting thing for us security folks is that it can be used for anti-debug checks where malware can actually time its own code and see whether or not it thinks it's being debugged and then change its behavior accordingly. 